Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. In today's lesson, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be learning how to create a lock screen. I got a lot of uh, emails about my previous lock screen tutorial that we did not complete because I lost all the files due to a bad hard drive. So I decided to make a new one, which was inspired by an iOS device. You guys can see that this is um, an iOS inspired lock screen. So let me give you a short demonstration of how this works. You guys can see if I type in the incorrect four digit password, it tells me my password is wrong and I actually spelled password incorrectly but um, my password is 0907 and you guys can see when I type it incorrectly it gives me a nice little message obviously you guys don't have to display a message you can open up another GUI or do something else um, it's completely up to you but this is a very basic version of a lock screen that I've created it's using a hard-coded password so you cannot change it once you release your app however if you guys would like uh, part 2 of a lock screen tutorial please do stay and watch until the end of the video where I announce what I'm going to be doing with uh, part two and I uh, hope you guys stay tuned for that. So let's get started with the video guys. Okay guys, so the first thing that you need to do is head on over to my website, techniqueindustries.com slash YouTube. And that's gonna take you to our YouTube resource pack download page. And you can download everything here free of charge. It doesn't come with any code. It does come with all the graphics and the GUIs, um, uh, Photoshop files and everything that you need to basically get started with the GUI aspect of the tutorial. So we're gonna scroll down to the bottom and look for iOS style lock screen resource pack. You're just gonna click on it and it's gonna take us to hightail.com where I host all my files. You're just gonna click on download. Make sure you have WinRAW installed because that is what I use to uh, you know, zip up all my archives. So once you have it downloaded, all you're gonna do is right click on it, go to extract files and extract it to wherever you're comfortable with. Try not to put it uh, somewhere where you delete a lot of files. Um, you know, keep it safe because you don't want to mistake any uh, delete the entire project. So once you have it stored wherever you like, go to, uh, open up NetBeans, go to File, Open Project, and you're going to select Password Lock Screen Tutorial. And you guys will see a little coffee cup icon. That means it's a Java project and can be opened up in NetBeans. So I'm going to open up the project. You guys will see it pop up on the left hand side where it says Projects. You're going to expand the view, expand source packages, and expand com.technicindustries.passwordlock. And we're just going to open up lock screen GUI.java. And as you guys can see, this is what I showed you in the beginning of the video. So the first thing that we're going to program is these four little icons right here. And for those of you guys who are not familiar with iOS style uh, designs and their lock screen, every time you click on a button, it lights up one of these little lights telling you how many uh, digits you've typed into your code already. And it basically gives you, uh, you know, some little sort of feedback. And uh, I do have an example for you guys. I do have an iOS device right here. This is an iPod Touch, fifth gen. Uh, I think with the cracked screen because I dropped it on the floor. Uh, but what you guys can see is if you look on the top right there, you guys can see the four dots which I've mimicked. And when we click on buttons, you can see them uh, light up very faintly. I'm not too sure if you guys can see that on the camera because the video is kind of small in the corner. But uh, that's basically what we're going to be doing now. So the first thing that we want to do is create a method. Uh, the reason why we're going to create a method is because we need to monitor each one of these buttons. And instead of typing out the code 50 times, well actually 10 times, uh, we're just going to type it out once and then make use of the method multiple times. So let's go ahead here and underneath the constructor, which is this bit of code right here, those four lines, um, five lines, I don't know. We're going to type in public void. Uh, we're going to call it circle control because we are controlling the circles, I guess. Okay, now once we have that, we're gonna create a counter. So what the counter is gonna do is, every time you click on a button, it's gonna count up, so by one, obviously. So when you click on eight for the first number, it's gonna go from zero to one, and it's gonna light up the first icon. Then when you click on six, it's gonna light up the second icon, click on one, third icon, click on three, fourth icon, or whatever combination of buttons you choose. So in order to create a counter, we're just gonna go above the constructor and declare a variable with int, and we're gonna call it count, okay? And inside the public void circle control, we're just gonna type in count plus plus. And what this does is, it's basically shorthand for saying count is equal to count plus one. So what happens is count is initially equal to zero. When you click on the first button, we're gonna run this method and this count plus plus is gonna be run alongside the method obviously, because that's what's contained in the circle control method. Uh, so it's gonna go from zero, zero plus one is one. Then count is equal to one. Then the next time you click on the button or the next time you run a method, the same method right here, it's going to go from 1 to 2 and then count is going to equal to 2. And that's basically how you create a counter in pretty much any sort of programming language. Okay, great. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to light up uh, each one of these icons individually. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to be using a switch and case statement. So switch and case is very similar to if and else. If you've never used switch, um, it's very easy to use. So inside the switch statement, inside these two brackets, 
you need to type in what's going to be monitored and for our case it's going to be the variable count so it's going to keep on checking on the variable count and inside these two big brackets these two curly brackets we can have cases for each uh, value that count could possibly be so when count is equal to one or basically when you click on the first button then count is equal to one so we're going to have a case one okay and inside um case one we're going to type in code that does whatever we need to do for the first case of count which basically is when you click on the first button so inside here we're going to basically change the image in this uh unfilled circle and the way that we're going to do that is we're going to create an image icon and we're going to do it right on the top just below uh just below the int count so what we're going to type in is image icon uh, we're going to call this one filled is equal to new image icon okay and you guys can see we have an error and the error is because we have not imported javax.swing so just click on this little light bulb icon and you guys can see we can add the import for it automatically netbeans has a great feature so inside these brackets for image icon we're going to type in get class open close brackets dot get resource okay and you guys can see we're going to remove null and we're going to replace it with a uh, double colon or whatever it's called i've been programming for like 10 years i still don't know what it's called but inside the string uh, we're going to type in the directory of the image that we want to use so mine is stored in, in images and then it's called circle .png. so we're going to type in slash images slash circle oh sorry slash not dot slash circle underscore filled and do not forget dot png on the end if you guys are struggling um to understand why your image not is not showing up or why it's disappearing just make sure you have the extension on the end if you're using bitmap use bitmap dot bmp if you're using jpeg obviously jpeg okay so now that we have the filled one done we're just going to copy this and we're going to paste it for the unfilled one so you guys can see we have circle filled and circle unfilled so we're just going to change the second one to unfilled and then circle unfold inside our string uh, right here on the end of our line of code. Okay, great. So the next thing that we want to do is in case one, we want to change the icon for the first circle. And you guys can see I've called mine code one, which is a J label. So inside the source code, we're going to type in code one dot set icon. And we're going to set it inside these brackets to be filled. So what's going to happen is uh, when you click on the first button it's going to increment count and count is going to be equal to one and then it's because we have case one um it's going to execute the code which is in case one and basically the code says code one that said icon filled so this little icon here is going to be changed to the filled icon which is going to indicate to the user he's clicked his first button okay then once you've done that you're going to press enter and you're just going to break out of that statement so all you got to do next is copy and paste this code three more times and just make sure you change all the variable names. Do not forget to do that, guys. Um, if you notice that your icons are going all wonky, it most likely is because you have not changed all these variables to match correctly. So as you guys can see, case one, code one, that's it, icon. Case two, code two, case three, code three, etc. Okay, so once we've done that, uh, we can go ahead and test out a code. And I'm going to be using this first, uh, first button just to to indicate my point. So we're going to right click on it, go down to events, mouse, mouse release. You guys can use any one of these um, mouse events. You can experiment and play around, but the code is essentially the same. So inside here, all we're going to do is we're just going to type in circle control and we're going to be accessing this method. Okay, so we're just going to type in circle control, open close bracket, semicolon, and that's all you have to type. If we did not make a method, we'd have to continually type this 10 times and as you guys can see it looks messy it's extra code um, you just don't need it. it's just better to do it this way so there we go now we just got to do that for every single other button but i'm going to do that just yet let's go ahead and try our code and we haven't configured it with any of the other buttons except for the first one okay sorry about that guys i had a weird error i just forgot to compile and build so just make sure you click on compile and build then click on the run button and now you guys can see when you click on one the first icon lights up click on again second one third fourth and it does not go back um, so we need to fix that bit of code right now so the way that we're going to fix it is after we say code for that set icon filled we're going to say count is equal to zero we're basically going to be resetting the counter and before we reset the counter what we're going to do is we're basically going to set all these icons back to the default position which is all unfilled so the way that we do that is we're just going to type in code one dot set icon and instead of saying filled we're going to type in unfold and we're going to copy and paste that for code 2 code 3 and code 4 okay guys i just finished that up make sure you have these four lines of code typed in 
Now what you guys are going to notice is that when you click on the fourth button, this little icon here isn't going to light up. And the reason being is it is actually going to light up, but it's going to be removed so fast by the next line of code that you won't actually notice it. So let's go ahead and try it out. And you guys won't see the fourth one light up. Okay, guys, and this is another case of not compiling and building. So make sure you do that. And there you guys go. You can see it has all disappeared. Now, that's not too big of a deal. If you want, you could add in a delay so it shows up first, then it resets. But it's fine for our purposes. Okay, so now that we have that done and everything is working in terms of these four little icons, we're going to go ahead and code all these buttons and also make sure that they actually work to generate a code. Well, not gener generate a code, we're going to be typing in a master code. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it's just a basic uh, tutorial. So the way that we're going to do this is we're firstly going to create a master password. So I want to create it as a string. So I just create this above int count. String master code is equal to an empty string for now. Uh, you guys can use whatever password you want. I'm not going to choose my password right now. I'm going to use it at the end of the video. Um, but you want to go with the four digit password. So now that we have that done, we're going to create four more variables. Now we're going to call this int code one. Make sure it's all uh, lowercase letters. Int code two, int code three, int code four. Okay. So we have the four codes and what each one of these codes represent is one digit in your password, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and choose 0907 as my password. That's my lucky number. Um, someone will know why. And just press control save to make sure all your work is saved. So code one represents the value zero, code two represents the value nine, code three, zero, code four, seven. Um, that's if you type the password incorrectly. If you don't, each one of these values will be different and it will not match. And then your, obviously your password won't work, okay? Then lastly, we're going to create another one called int button click. Okay. So button click is when you actually click on a button. And the way that this is going to work is each time you click on a button using this mouse event, you guys can see we're using the button one mouse released event. Um, we are simply going to say button clicked is equal to um, one. Now button click, sorry. And the reason why I said button click is equal to one is because, well, button click is actually equal to one. We are clicking button one. So obviously button click actually equal to one. So to make more sense, I want to go with button two events, mouse, mouse released. And I'm just going to copy and paste this code because from now on out, it's pretty much copy and paste. Okay. Button click is equal to the value of two. Okay. So every single one of these buttons has a separate value, which button click is going to equal to. So what you guys want to do now is repeat it for three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and this is zero. And I'll, get, I'll see you guys in a second once I've done it myself as well. Okay, guys, I've just completed all the copy and pasting and changing the values. Make sure you've changed the value. So for button four, make sure button click is actually equal to four. So you just want to go over it again, make sure everything is done correctly. Otherwise, you're going to spend a lot of time troubleshooting if you do have a problem. And it's just going to be something very silly. So make sure that's all uh, correct. So in case one, what we're going to be doing now is we actually, uh, let's type this in underneath this line of code, the code one.set icon. We're going to type in code one is equal to button click. Okay. Now I know this might not make a lot of sense right now, but when you click on a button, let's say we click on button four, button click is immediately equal to four. Okay. So imagine button click is equal to four. Now, because that was our first click, it's going to go into case one and then code one is equal to the value of four. Okay. So if I said my first value was zero, my first button click was zero. What's going to happen is it's going to set button click equal to zero. And because it's case one, it's going to say code one is equal to button click and button click, like I said, is equal to zero. So code one therefore becomes zero. And then at the end, we're going to match code one with the first letter. We're going to match code two with the second letter. And if everything matches up, then your password is correct. So all you have to do is copy and paste this thing four more times. Like I said, it's just copy and paste from here on out. Okay. And then obviously change the values. Don't forget to change the values, guys. It's not as simple as just copy and pasting. You'd have to change the odd value. Okay. So now that we've done that, what we want to do is we want to merge all of our codes. Okay. So each one of, so we want to add code one, code two, code three, and code four. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in string master test is equal to code one plus an empty string plus code two plus another empty string plus code three plus another empty string plus code four. Okay. 
So basically what we've done here is we've converted all the integers to a string and then we've added them up all together. So we've created one, um, one string basically and we've assigned that to a variable called master test. Then next off, we're gonna type in an if and else statement. So if, and then else. Okay, and if, in the if statement, we wanna type in if master test dot equals master code, which is up there. Then we're gonna print out a message. Oops, you don't want the semicolon at the end. Else you're gonna print out another message. So to print out a message, we're gonna use jopsionpane. So jopsionpane dot show message dialog. Oh, come on, NetBeans. Inside these brackets, you're gonna type in null, semicolon, and then you're gonna type in a string of whatever message you want to display. So we're gonna type in your password. Your password is correct. Hooray. Okay, you want to copy and paste that into the else statement and you're just going to change the message. Um, oops, little typo there. And then you're just going to change this one to say your password is wrong. Please try again. Okay, that's all. Now once you've done that, we're going to compile and build and then go ahead, and, uh, go ahead and run our program. So we're going to type in 0, 0807 and you guys can see the password is incorrect. Then we're going to try 0907 and you guys can see it says your password is in fact correct. So there you go guys. That's It's a simple password um, checker. Also, what you guys will notice is that you guys can see all four lights have been lit up because this little message provides a delay until you press OK. So that's the reason why I didn't remove it and why I kept it there. So if you just type in 0907, you guys can see it says your password is correct, hooray. Uh, if you type in something else, it says your password is incorrect. Okay guys, so that's it for this tutorial. If you did enjoy it, please don't forget to leave us a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, so this is part one of the lock screen tutorial. I'm not too sure if you guys want to see part two. Uh, I do want to do part two, just because what it's going to include is something that's more uh, you know, phone based. So what's going to happen is you can actually set your password in the app itself instead of hard coding it into the program. Um, you can actually change it and, you know, do a whole host of different other options. Maybe have a master reset, a master password that will reset your entire code if you forget it or something like that. So if you guys want to see lock screen part two, please like the video, leave it in the comment section below and we'll go ahead and create this for you guys. So, okay guys, uh, I guess that's it. Oh, before I go, I just want to ask you guys if you like the little um, window on the top right hand side of your screen off my face. Uh, I know sometimes I go on explaining things, you know, a bit too long. And I just thought it would be nice to have something to actually look at while I explain instead of looking at a static screen or my mouse moving around. So if you guys do like it, uh, please leave it in the comment section below. If you guys don't, I'll simply remove it. It's not a big deal. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching and thanks for always supporting the channel.